I saw my baby earlier this morning And you know that she was walking on down the street Hey everybody, Tom Barnes, stories from the 70A, and today I am talking to a Hall of Famer. We got a blues mastery here in Chicago. You've been uh, given Grammy accolades and everything else, but I thought I'd talk to uh, Michael Charles here, who is a legend in the blues industry. I've worked with you over the years uh, when I was at WGN, with, and we were introduced via Steve Sanders. Yes, we were. <laughs> Uh, I did WGN way back in 1996 was the first time I did it and uh, uh, been, I was like a regular there yearly until the pandemic hit and things you know have changed a little bit now but uh, it was a, a pretty a quite long relationship with WGN. It was and uh, I, I loved having you there. Steve introduced me and for those who don't know Steve Sanders retired a few years ago but his blues love and his, and his brother is also in the music business. Steve dabbles in the music business but he's very fond of your work and then in turn I was very fond of your work and you are come to the blues via Australia, which I think is a very interesting piece of your story. Yes. Uh, yeah, well, uh, back in, in uh, 1989, 1990, my management said that uh, Buddy Guy's management and himself asked if I would come over and play Legends uh, when he opened up the new Legends, or no, it was the original Legends, sorry. Mm. And... Um, <clears throat> when he opened up the original one, when he left the checkerboard lounge and uh, my management said, we had this invitation, what do you think? And I just kind of looked at my management and said, there's nothing to think about, let's go. Right, it's Buddy Guy. <laughs> yes, and that's how, what got me to Chicago. And then when I, when I, when I got to Chicago from, from O'Hare Airport, going into downtown, I could see the, uh, the, just the whole spectacular was in the evening and just that whole skyline and it was a beautiful night it was a, a winter night in february but it was clear and i fell in love with the city and i basically never left man i just it became home and uh 30 odd years later you know i'm an american citizen you just don't know where life takes you and uh, just go with the flow i guess yeah, I, mean, I, bet, I bet you didn't think about ever living in Chicago when you were a kid, you know, just growing up in Australia. I imagine you thought maybe you would just perhaps just be born and raised Australian for your whole life. Well, yes and no, Tom, because I, um, I always had this fascination about the United States. I was, as a kid growing up, I was just fascinated with the Wild West. So I would, I would just get into those you know those those cowboy movies and things as a kid and uh and as getting into my teens and everything I would keep saying to my mother I've got to go to the U.S. I've got to go to the U.S. so it was something was inside me that one that was drawing me towards the U.S. so just fascinated with the whole music industry as I started understanding uh more about life and music itself and and where i wanted to go so that invitation kind of opened the door and said oh well there's no stopping me now here's my excuse and and off i go but i remember talking with my mother um when i was in the states um i think about a year or so and uh i was talking to my mother and she goes how are you doing and i said i'm doing great i love it here and she goes you were born in the wrong country <laughs> <laughs> well if mom says it then it's true right like then yeah. you're like okay i'm where i'm supposed to be yeah so it, it's sort of i i didn't work hard at it time was just one of those things where i was drawn to it and and it just became a reality and um as I said, like earlier, just go with the flow, you know. Don't think about things too hard. And you've been doing that going with the flow uh, for 30 years here in the States, and you've toured all over. I mean, you've been to the far reaches of everywhere, I feel like, you know, when every time we would have you on WGN, we'd look at dates, oh, he's traveling this day, he's traveling, he's over here, he's over there. Like, 
has uh, has it been the life that you thought it would be after coming to the states and being in a musician here based in uh, Chicago and kind of just going all over the place though with your music? No, not really, because when I first came to Chicago, obviously, you know, I started, I, I always tell everybody, I started with the red carpet. I mean, how can you get, how can you have a better start than, you know, the legendary Buddy Guy on your side, you know, and uh, and his management. So I started with the red carpet, but those, those first two weeks in Chicago with Buddy, I mean, I got introduced to people like, you know, the late and great Junior Wells and... Uh, uh, Eddie Clearwater and then uh, Jimmy Dawkins, you know, all these heavy duty guys that just uh, all I knew them were on record covers. Mm -hmm. And here I am, I'm shaking hands with them and sharing a stage with them and things like that. So it was basically, again, you just go with the flow and, and you have to, you have to kind of, uh, don't think too much about it because you, you will freeze, you know. I mean, it's like a, a shock to your system. But as, as time passed, I kind of just kind of adapted to it. And I didn't I didn't let it become a, a, a whirlwind or anything like that. I just kind of, just, just kind of went with the flow. And um, when I think back, it, it gives me shaky knees more than when it was actually happening because uh -huh. I think back and go, what did I put off? Or, uh, well, that's, that's something you'd only probably have a dream and then you wake up and say you want to go back to sleep again or something. But uh, it just, I, I, I just got, I think a lot of it is right place, right time, I guess. Um, and, and, and just enjoy the moment. I've heard a lot of people say right place, right time for a lot of things, people like yourself that I've interviewed over the years where they say that kind of thing. And then when they also say looking back on where they were, when they now recognize where things were really, really pivotal for them. So at the time it was, it was nervous, but you know, exciting because you're younger and you're kind of, kind of, you know, ignorant almost to the situation until when you're older and you realize how important, how special that moment was because you have like you said before, a lot of water underneath the bridge where you have had perspective on like, oh man, like I could have crumbled there, but like your bravado when you're young, uh, not you in general, you know, I'm just talking about people in general, like when you're young, you almost don't know the big situations when they're right there. And that's the beauty of looking back, I suppose, you know, but, or at least not the significance of them. You recognize that they're important, but when you're older, I think you have a better appreciation for them because you're looking back going man oh man if it wasn't for that i wouldn't be here today like this you know and i think that only kind of falls upon after years of looking back exactly but you know you've got to i think when, when you when you think well in my i can't talk for everybody but for my case when i think back in my younger years or, or the the humble early beginnings of a career you have these visions you have these uh, these dreams in your life, and so I want to be like, and, and you think about your heroes that you're, you're looking up at, and uh, you go, I want to be like that. But as you get into your later years of your career, you're just doing it. You know, yeah. you, you really haven't, you really haven't got a vision anymore because you're in the middle of it all. You're actually doing it, so your biggest concern is keeping up with your scheduling and, and make sure you can go into the studio and, and, and write a good song and then end up recording it and, and keep your fingers crossed that people like what you do. And uh, you take it on the road, you tour, and, uh, and it, you just do it. But in the early years, you've got a lot more time, on a lot of free time in your brain where you're you're dreaming about it and, and, you're, and you're having these visions of what it's going to be like when you finally, I hate using these words when you say, when I make it in the industry, I don't mm -hmm. think you really make anything. You just, you're just working, you know? So, um, but yeah, you haven't, you don't think as hard anymore once you're in the middle of it, especially when your schedules get busy. And I'm sure, sure you can relate to this yourself. You get to a point where, you get up in the morning and all you're worrying about is those schedules you got for that day. You want to get through that day. But yep. in the early years of any career, I think you've got 
a lot more time to think about things. And when you, and that makes you dream a little bit and makes you get these visions may come true or may not. So speaking of, do you have any visions? Uh, I know you're in the middle of it now, but is there something that you still haven't done yet that you would like to do that is like on the, you know what? When I do that, like I can, I'll be really, I had a place around me. Or did you already do all that? Um, again, I think because when, you, when your career grows, you just work towards things. And when you, you get invitations to do uh, certain places or, or certain tours and, and you might get invited by a certain artists and you do whatever you do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we all got our, our goals. Um, I always had this, um, I always had this thing that I, I would love to have, or would love to, um, have the opportunity to shake Carlos Santana's hand. You know, I've never met that man. And he's one of my all time greats. And uh, yeah, for sure. That inspired me when I was a kid. Um, uh, and, um, and he's still going. Oh, he's still going strong, man. I mean, yeah. he, uh, he just seems to, he just seems to ripen up better and better every time I see him. You know, I've went to see him play live a few times and, uh, Every show just gets better and better. He's just an amazing player. But it all comes from his soul. He's such a soulful player. Um, there's so many others that I can mention too, but, the, you know, it's, I'm not going to go down the big list with you, but they're the kind of things that I look forward to more is uh, just shaking their hand, basically, and be able to sit in a room and have a conversation. And if you get together and get to play with them, that's just a bonus for me. But uh, meeting Absolutely. these, yeah. So what, what's going on now? You're always on tour. You're still moving along. Like, what's the best way for people to keep up with what you're doing? And, uh, and what, what are you doing this summer? Uh, the best thing to keep up with me is always go to my website, michaelsales.us, and, and just see where I'm going, because I do that myself, because there's so much. <laughs> keep that schedule, right? <laughs> going next. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm on the road so much that uh, I really don't have a lot of opportunities to do a lot in Chicago anymore. I'm traveling so much. But I did get uh, an opportunity to play um, on uh, Tall Wind or the, or the Tall Ship Windy. That's what it's called. It, uh, oh, yeah. So I'm going to be doing that uh, throughout the summer on Monday nights and then probably head out on the other nights, some other state or something, but I'll be back on Mondays to do certain dates. Now, I can't give you the dates right now. I have to go on my website and check. Oh, yeah, sure. But, um, but yeah, that's something in Chicago, which, I mean, I love doing stuff in Chicago. I mean, this is, that was my humble beginnings when I came to the United States with Chicago, and I, and I actually did fall in love with Chicago, and it's, I feel quite honoured that I that I've been accepted in Chicago as a musician and, and just to call it home. It's just a great place. Well, you mentioned that you're on the road often as every musician I've ever interviewed. They're, they're on the road more than they are at home and home is important because, you know, it gets you reset and gets, uh, you know, like I, it's my sanctuary, right? You travel, you get home, you kind of reset. Is there anything you do when you are home that makes you just, helps you maybe be, uh, be grounded a little bit? Um, I'm, I'm pretty much a workaholic, Tom. And uh, I, when I do come home and I'm off the road, I, I've got my own recording studio in my home now. So, uh, so the work is right there. So I just, that is my relaxation. I'll, I'll go I know it's my, weird, right? I've yeah. had the same thing. This is not work for me. This is relaxing to me. Of what course. we're doing right now. This is my of, studio. Yeah. Of course it is. So I, I, I go into my studio and pick up my guitar and uh, write a song or get behind my keyboard and, and, and write a song and then start laying it down. So when I'm home, I'm actually, if you want to call it work, but I'm actually continuing on the things that I can't do while I'm on the road you know um, I got home for example I got home last night I was totally exhausted from uh, having a really busy day 
uh, getting to the getting to this festival and then coming back and I was exhausted so I sat down on my couch and I was about to walk downstairs but I had my guitar sitting on the couch just picked up the guitar and I thought I'll just I just got done playing a show and I'm strumming on this guitar and I looked at my watch and I was at least an hour and a half had passed and come up with a whole bunch of new ideas, even when I'm exhausted. It's just, it's just one of those things. I don't know. And I remember as a kid, my parents would always say, uh, there is something wrong with you, man. Can't you put that? <laughs> can't you go outside and, and, and just play on the streets or get into a fight, kick a football, do something normal? And I would look at my dad and say, well, playing guitar to me is normal. Yeah. And you know what, you, when you get those moments where things just start coming out of your brain, right. And it's into your hands and through the guitar, you don't ever want to stop that. Right. Like, cause that's, that's just a gift and you don't want to put it away. You don't want to not accept the gift. you got to let the gift come out and play and then you write it down and keep moving. And it's a therapy, you know, it's yeah. it just, yeah. I mean, I've often uh, opened up my eyes when I've taken a nap and, and I, I, I realized I fell asleep while I was playing, you know. <laughs> just, <laughs> and the guitar is still on me. And I just continue on, wake up and continue. I'm not exaggerating, but that's how it is. It's just the way I am. And uh, it, it, it's a blessing, I think, you know. And so you are out on the road uh, because it's summertime. You were hitting the festivals and whatnot through, I'm, I'm guessing, all summer long, right? Yes, we go and do the festivals. I mean, I just got back from Canada. I just did, uh, I believe, uh, two and a half weeks in Canada. And we played a different city every night wow. throughout Canada. And it's just, and, and it's just, it just eggs me on. It's just so, it's just such a good feeling. And you know, I keep saying that, I know, but it's just, um, sometimes I can't find the right words to describe how I feel when I'm doing what I do. Has there been a place that uh, stands out to you to be the most unique place you've ever played? Just something where you're like, wow, that was something different. Um, I'm, I'm going to go back in time on that one. I'm going to yeah. go back in time when I first came to Chicago and they took me to Legends and uh, I just got off the plane and I was supposed to do the show the next night. So buddy guys manager marty saltzman at the time takes me to legends and he goes oh while you're here why don't you just get up on stage and and play with buddy and <laughs> and i just got off the plane we had a six hour delay in uh in la and i also back then it used to take over 35 36 hours to get from melbourne australia to chicago with a six hour delay. So I was totally jet lagged and he throws me yeah. up once. And uh, next minute I, I, I know, Buddy just turns around and looks at me and says, take it. And I'm like, okay. So I just went in automatic pilot and, and, and did the thing. And it was really weird because it was after when I got off stage that Marty calls me and says, I'll introduce you to Buddy. And I'm thinking, this is backwards. I get into buddy after i play with him that's not normal but but that's how it happened so that would be one of the most most memorable things in my career i mean it just it doesn't get any bigger or any better than that. i'll call it the red carpet you can't it, it doesn't i just can't even find the right words there's nothing bigger and trial by fire for sure go ahead take it okay <laughs> buddy guy sure in your yeah. club here we go <laughs> And, and inside me, I'm thinking, I felt like saying to him, take what? Take it where? You know? <laughs> wow. What an incredible story. Thank you for sharing that, Mike. Not a problem. So, uh, folks, you mentioned the website before, but uh, as we wrap up here, I just wanted to make sure we give out the website again, and you're going to be on the road all summer long and even into the winter and beyond. But the website, one more time. The website is michaelcharles.us. And uh, anything you want, I always say to everybody, anything you want to know about me or don't want to know about me, it's on that website. So that's the and, place. And that's all the stuff they can find, your music, uh, any new music that comes out, all comes out on there and people can follow you there as well. Yeah, anything new is going to show up on my website before it shows up anywhere. So that's, that's the place. If anyone's got an interest in what I'm doing, that's the place to go. 
Amazing. Michael, thank you so much for taking time to talk with me this morning on your busy schedule. I know it's busy. Uh, with a musician's work is never done, so I appreciate the time and uh, continued success, and I look forward to seeing you live and in person at a concert soon. It was great to see you again, Tom, after all these years, man, and uh, good luck with all your endeavors in your life, too, man. I appreciate that very much, and we'll maybe we'll get Steve Sanders out of retirement to show up at a club here, and uh, we'll, all, we'll, see, we'll, ha we'll have a drink together. Well, if he comes up and I'm playing, he's coming up too, because I know- Damn right, playing. right? I'd kick his butt <laughs> up there. I'll reach out to him and we'll make that happen. Yes, okay. Take it easy, brother. All right, take care. Have a great day.